Hi, I'm David with Tilia Labs. Today, I want to talk to you about Tilia Phoenix's innovative Imposition AI tool. Imposition AI uses artificial intelligence to evaluate millions of potential layout solutions in mere seconds. This is a uniquely powerful tool that enables you to find the optimal layout either based on production environment parameters that you define, or you can even let Phoenix tell you the best way to run a job. Let's talk about how this all works. Now, before we jump into Imposition AI, we need to talk about your production environment. Why? Well, this information directly impacts how Imposition AI will work for any given job. We need to give some information like presses, stocks, and potential plates or finishing devices so that Phoenix knows exactly what potential options it has to choose from as it intelligently finds the ideal layout. If you haven't already, this is the step where you would model your production costs, capabilities, and speeds in Phoenix by creating and configuring the finishing devices, presses, stocks, and plate libraries. As you're setting this up, remember that Imposition AI utilizes the costing information from your libraries to find layouts. So we always recommend modeling your costs as best as you can to allow Phoenix to make the best decisions. Now that Phoenix has a holistic view of the production environment, Imposition AI will use the product parameters like information about die shape, spacing, and quantity, along with the settings in Imposition AI to find the most cost-effective Imposition result. Now for a deeper understanding of the various options, let's look at each setting in detail and see how each option affects the Imposition AI result. For today's video, I'll be using Tilia Phoenix 7.0. When you open the Imposition AI window, the first option relates to which tool you'd like to use. Here's what each option means. I'm going to start with the most commonly used tool, Plan. The Plan tool is the most powerful tool within Phoenix. Plan will pack products across multiple layouts using different device and stock combinations to find the most cost-effective layout possible. Optimize tool is similar to Plan, but it finds the best single layout across any press and sheet combination given the input products. You can see in this example that if Optimize is run and there are too many products to fit on a single sheet, Optimize will fail to find any results since they won't all fit. But if we narrow down which products are selected, it will find the optimal layout for the selected products. The Populate tool will automatically assign products to the currently selected die template. The numbers of each product placed in the layout are determined by the Populate tool to ensure the lowest amount of overruns. Multiple variations of the original die layout will appear with products assigned to different dies in the layout. Lastly, the Impose tool will find an imposition for selected products for the currently selected sheet size and press. Impose requires that you already have a press and sheet defined in the job, so it will only create an imposed layout for the currently selected layout. Each of these options provide a particular method for finding layouts that could be helpful in a given situation. In general though, Plan is the most powerful as it can look across all stocks and devices and has the ability to generate multiple layouts for each result. You will also notice that the Impose and Populate tools require you to already have a sheet and press selected for a given layout, while Plan and Optimize aren't constrained or even concerned with the current layout. Now for each of these tools, we need to have an Imposition AI profile selected. Let's see how these profile settings affect our results. For these examples, I'll be using the Plan tool. To start, I'll click the dropdown, make a new profile, and give it a name. You'll notice that each time we make a new profile, it'll have some default settings already selected. The first section of settings is the Strategies section. Strategies control how products are laid out on the sheet and generally correspond to your needs downstream and finishing. Horizontal and vertical cut make a rectangle or guillotine cut layout with first cut in the horizontal or vertical directions. The nesting options allow products to be tightly nested in the layout, generally for products that need to be cut out with a cutting die or on a cutting table. Within this strategy, there are three general nesting options. Any combination of these nesting options can be enabled at the same time to find the best layouts. First, we have free nesting, where product items can be tightly nested in any way on the sheet without a discernible pattern. Grid nesting nests product items into step and repeat grids for more consistent grid-like pattern layouts. This option is especially useful when there are a smaller number of unique shapes being nested onto a layout. Strip nesting nests product items into vertical or horizontal strips. Items can be rotated to fit together, and some free nesting is performed to maximize sheet usage, so strips are not as rigidly defined as horizontal cut or vertical cut strategies. Lastly, the Templates option places products into existing layout templates from the Templates library or those imported directly into the current job, from a CF2 or DXF, for example. You can select any combination of strategies to be used in an Imposition AI profile, 
and plan results can even use multiple strategies within the same plan result. The strip options allow you to define rules for how strips should be placed when using the horizontal, vertical, strip, or template strategies. First, the strip rule controls which products can be placed in the same horizontal or vertical strip. None means there are no strip rules. All combinations of products are allowed within each horizontal row or vertical column. Same product means that within a strip, only instances of a single product are allowed. No other products can be placed within that strip. Same dimensions only allows products with the same width and height in a strip. No other products with differing widths or heights can be placed in the same strip. Now keep in mind that the die shape itself can differ for products in the same strip as long as the dimensions are the same. The same shape option means that within a strip, only products with the same die shape are allowed, and other products with different die shapes can't be placed in the same strip. As you can see with the remaining options, you can configure strip rules to create strips based on the colors, foils, or varnishes in a product as well. The template rule controls when to apply the strip rule to templates, if at all. When a strip rule is chosen above, you can apply this same rule to templates, treating the templates as either horizontal or vertical strips. Phoenix analyzes the templates to detect these strips and then enforces the strip rule. Alignment defines how the strips of products are aligned on the sheet and how products are aligned within the strips. For instance, if you're cutting the sheet along left and top edges first, then you'll want top left to reduce the number of cuts needed. The gutter setting allows you to define the amount of space to guarantee between strips of products on the sheet. Lastly, the gutter rule allows you to choose when to apply the gutter space between two strips on the sheet. For example, if you always want 10 millimeters of space between strips containing foil and those that do not contain foil, then you can use the has foil rule. Next in the profile, we have our layout options. The layout options apply to all layout strategies and control how many products are placed on the sheet in the order of placement. The first option is sheet fill. This setting controls how aggressively the sheet is filled up with products. Now, this setting is often misunderstood. So let's review the possible options here. First, the balance mode will use the best ratios of products to avoid creating too many overruns. Phoenix will try to fill sheets with the best product combinations to keep all layouts filled without much overrun, but sometimes there may not be a perfect option. The balance mode allows you to easily add a few more products to the sheet manually. Max mode will aggressively fill up the sheet up to the max overrun allowed for the products on the sheet. This is good if you prefer to use all the sheet even if it creates unnecessary overruns. Keep in mind that the max setting doesn't automatically fill up the entire sheet every time as it depends on the order quantity and the max overruns parameter. The min mode will place only the minimum number of products on the sheet. It's useful if you're mostly trying to place as many one-ups as possible on the sheet and would like to go in afterwards and add more products to the job. This is a fairly special use case option and most users will stick with balanced or max mode. Limit unique products per layout option allows you to set a maximum number of unique products on a sheet. By default, plan will place any number of products on the same layout. For example, if you want every product to go on its own layout, enable this setting and enter one in the text field. Next up is allow product bleed in gripper. By default, if you have a gripper value defined for your press, it's treated as an image margin and the layout strategies won't place product bleeds into the gripper. Enabling this setting allows products to be placed right up to the gripper, even if their bleed paths go into the gripper. The use derived sheets option will let plans search using your sheet sizes like normal, also, search for results using half size and quarter size sheets. A derived sheet means that the original sheet is split into two or four. Plan will use the constraints of the press to make sure any derived sheets can be printed on the selected presses. Align items to outside edge will push all items to the content margin, which makes for fewer guillotine cuts. Favorite ordered placement will let you define the order of products in the layout based on the order that the products were added to the job. You can specify the starting corner as well as the order method either by repeating rows or snaking and starting either vertically or horizontally. Now let's have a look at our plan options. These settings control how the plan tool behaves. The mode controls the overall behavior of how the plan tool places products and finds layouts. Standard mode will try to optimize the entire job. This is the recommended way to run plan in most cases. Layout by layout mode will try to create tightly filled layouts one at a time. This mode is suitable for cases in digital printing when products are low order quantities and products are allowed to be split up across layouts. Sequential mode will plan products sequentially according to the original order products were added to the job. Sequential planning can greatly simplify the collection and packing process. Cut and stack will create cut and stack layouts. 
This replaces the old cut and stack setting that used to be at the bottom of Imposition AI profiles. Finally, the lanes planning mode places products into lanes that can continue across multiple layouts, or frames. This mode is best suited for web-fed presses and is designed to intelligently balance lanes to reduce total run length. The finishing options will affect the order of items on layouts. You can choose from either inline or nearline based on how you do your finishing. The nearline option will simply reverse the order. Next up, the stacking order controls the order of bound signatures within each section of a product when running in lanes plan mode. The reverse stacking order option will reverse the signatures within each section. Just to make things clear, remember that the reverse stacking order differs from nearline finishing option in that nearline reverses the signature order across all sections in the product. The reverse option is used when finishing equipment needs to process signatures in each section, the opposite order they are fed in. So the normal option means that the signature order within each section is unchanged, while reverse means the signature order within each section is reversed. By default, plan will ensure that each product is only on one layout in the job. If the allow products to span layout setting is enabled, however, the plan tool can try to place the same product across multiple layouts to further optimize the job. Spanning products can lead to lower costs in printing, sometimes with added overhead in post press or shipping. The use run length of one for all layouts option will make plan only create layouts with a run length of one, so there will be no repeats. This is useful in some digital printing environments where it's easier to process one layout at a time. You can use this option in conjunction with the sequential mode to produce single copy layouts in order. Next up on our general tab is the applying layout section. These control what happens when results are applied to the job. Split bleed overlaps will split all overlapping bleed paths between products when the layouts from Imposition AI are applied to the job. Place products in group will place all products in each layout into a group when applying the layouts to the job. This makes it so product layout positions are locked and can be easily moved around as a group in the layout. Finally, ensure placement honors press margins. So by default, the placement rules of the press are used when applying results. Depending on the way placement rules are defined in the press and the sizes of product bleed paths, it might be possible at times for the press placement rules to push the bleed paths of products in the generated layouts into an image margin. If you disable this option, then the layout will be automatically shifted in these cases to avoid content getting into press margins, which means the final placement might differ from the press's placement rules. The new web options section provides special options for web or role-based presses. So typically, digital presses have a frame size for each layout imaged on a roll. HP Indigo presses, for instance, are this way. The Allow Signatures to Span Frames option will allow a signature, which has multiple pages, to straddle two frames, whereas by default, a signature is restricted to only a single frame. This allows for additional optimization when ganging to lanes for digital presses. The Plan Rules tab allows us to set up conditional logic for how Imposition AI should create layouts. For example, you may only want products that contain the same group parameter value, so you can easily collect items in finishing later. Or, maybe you don't want to mix any double-sided jobs with single-sided jobs. You can add as many rules as you want, group them, add additional logic rules, and even add rules based on custom product properties you want to add. So the options are truly limitless here. Lastly, if you have the optional scripting module, you'll see the Scripts tab in the Imposition AI profile. Here, you can define custom scripts to be run when an Imposition AI result is applied. We have more information on custom scripting on our website and in other videos, but you can use JavaScript to access just about any item in a job, set product or job properties, evaluate result layouts, and more. As you can see, there are many options and ways to tweak exactly how Imposition AI should create and evaluate layout options. And with scripting, you can really do just about anything. These Imposition AI profiles give you precise control to build the optimal layout for each and every production environment. Thanks for watching and spending time with Tilly Labs today. We hope you found this helpful. And as always, if you have any questions or feedback, please leave us a comment below or send an email to info at tillylabs.com. For more information, check out docs.tillylabs.com. Thanks again, and we hope to see you soon.